there is a time and place for everything. Right now, it's time to finish the water system, or at least the main part of it. Most recently, I showed you how I put in the semi-rigid tubes for the cold freshwater line, which comes directly from the freshwater tank, then supplies all the fittings with water, and then goes into the cold water inlet of the water boiler. So next, let's work on that. First, we're gonna have to attach these flexible tubes to the water boiler. As always, I use sealant tape to make sure we get a watertight connection. Next, I'm gonna add a couple of whale quick connect adapters to attach the boiler to the rest of the water system. I'm adding a shut-off valve before the cold water inlet of the boiler to facilitate maintenance works on the boiler in the future. Next, let's put in the red rigid tubes for the hot water line, which starts at the boiler's hot water outlet and returns along the same path as the blue water line, feeding all the fittings with hot water and ending at the first fitting. Here is the start. Here is the junction to the water tap of the galley sink. Here's the junction for the shower fittings. And then it ends at the hot water supply for the little hand washing sink in the head. At this point I want to put in the hose for the sink's water outlet because it has to pass through a very narrow space and so I want to pass it first since it's the thickest. I'm forced to use a 19mm to 25mm adapter to attach the sink water outlet to the grey water tank. Now that the grey water hose is put in place, I can feed the semi-rigid tubes through that narrow space and connect them to the water tap. Here you can see that narrow space I referred to earlier. And with that, the galley sink is fully plumbed up. Next I'm gonna add some tube clamps to secure the semi-rigid tubes in some places. I also add some rubber protection wherever the tubes touch the metal. And with that we can have a first look at the semi-rigid tubes where the freshwater line hot and cold is now completely finished. I may add a few more attachments at a later date to secure the semi-rigid tubes further. I quickly add a couple of plugs to the fittings that are not installed yet and then we move on. Next I'm going to connect the Gulper 320 to the wastewater tank. This pump will extract the wastewater and pump it out through the through hull which we are gonna build in a moment.
The shower sump will be connected at a later date once we start building the shower tub. Next I'm gonna add a hose to the bilge pump and I'm gonna use this 25mm T piece to join the hoses from the bilge pump and from the grey water tank so that they can both go to a single hose towards the through hull. I then added a couple of non-return valves into both hoses coming from the pumps to avoid water being pushed all the way down to the pumps on either side. I then wired all the electrical of all the DC powered devices before moving on with this brass through hull fitting. The plan is to install it somewhere behind the toilet here, together with this gooseneck tube. I made this wooden donut covered in epoxy resin to act as a spacer plate for the through hull fitting. After I found the right position, I cut a circle into the armor flex and hollowed it out. Now it's time to start the drilling. First I make a pilot hole. Then I'm gonna use this 40mm hole saw to cut the hole for the through hull fitting. I pre-drill the hole from the outside to prevent the paint from chipping. And then I finish the hole from the inside using some oil to lubricate the drill. Now that the hole is done, let's clean it up a little. And then add a couple of coats of paint. Now the through hull fitting itself, being made of brass, is not allowed to touch the steel at any place. To ensure this, I made this spacer ring out of UV resistant rubber and once I glue my wooden donut in place, you can see that its inner diameter is slightly smaller than the hole I cut into the steel, so that once I install and tighten the through hull fitting, there will be a space of at least a couple of millimeters between the brass and the steel. With these precautions put in place, we can now install the brass fitting in the right way and screw it down, at first only hand tight, at least during the period where we are still testing the system. Next I'll install the gooseneck tube. Here too I'm gonna have to add a structure in the future to have it securely locked in place. But from a principal point of view, the through hull fitting and extraction hoses are now complete. With that, we are ready for a first test. And please note that I left out a very important part of the build, namely wiring up all the pumps at the side of the switchboard panel for which I'm gonna use these two devices and exactly how it's done and how this works will be shown in a future episode. For now, let's move on to this. Before we continue, I want to make the following disclaimer about what happens with the wastewater from this boat. 
If you don't care about this and just want to watch me continue the build, you can skip this part. Now our boat was built in 1978. This was a time where smoking was still permitted on planes and where there were hardly any regulations on wastewater management for private boats. Therefore, many manufacturers from that period did not see the need to put in wastewater tanks of any kind. So when we first found our boat, it was set up in a way that all the wastewater was extracted directly to the outside of the boat. It turns out, at least here in Germany, that most recreational boats of similar age as ours or even more recent ones do not have wastewater tanks built in. Putting one in afterwards can be difficult, will be quite expensive and in many cases might be pretty much impossible. So that's the general situation. Now let's have a look at the legal situation. Overall, I found on my research that here in Germany the legal matters concerning wastewater management for recreational boats is ambiguous at best. For one, because Germany is composed of several federal states who all make their own rules. For another, because there are some European laws that apply, often with conflicting directives. In Hamburg, for example, along the coastal areas of northern Germany, the rule is that every boat, even private recreational vessels, must have a wastewater tank built in. Except if the boat was built before 2003 and the conversion to a wastewater tank would create disproportionately high cost compared to the value of the boat. Here in the Berlin area, the Water Police's official pamphlet does not even mention domestic wastewater, meaning the water being created in a domestic household, nor is there any mention of black water or let's call it toilet water. Further indication that there is no proper law dealing with this matter, at least here in Berlin. Finally, there is a European agreement which is quoted in full on the website of the German Federal Waterways and Shipping Department which refers to certain types of boats which must retain their wastewater and besides these types of boats, the introduction of wastewater into the river water is generally allowed. Now I'm not a legal professional and I didn't spend several months on this research, so if you have any other information, by all means, please let me know. Then, besides the legal question, there is the ethical question. Ideally, nothing should be introduced into the wild by humans, period. But if one cannot prevent it, at least there should be no unnatural elements that will pollute the natural environment. Nowadays, there are many cleaning products which are made of all natural ingredients and are overall non-threatening to the environment. The quality of your household wastewater can be further improved by using filters, but especially by a greater consciousness of the boat's inhabitants to not introduce anything into the water system that might be potentially dangerous in the first place. So that's the situation at the moment. Quite frankly, I do not like the idea of introducing anything into the water myself. So I'm thinking of a way how to build in a proper wastewater tank or two. But this has to wait until we put the boat back on the hard stand the next time. All this being said, once again, if you have any information on the legal situation here in Germany or any suggestions on how to make the water system more efficient in its current state, please let me know. And with that, let's continue with the video. To get started, I'm first gonna fill some water into the boat's main water tank. For this first test, I brought some water in a jerry can, but later on, of course, we're gonna fill it up at the marina. Now let's open up the tap at the bottom of the water tank. And then once we power on the accumulator kit, it will start filling up the balloon inside the green tank and in this way create some water pressure. Now when we open up the water tap in the galley, water will come out at a regular rate just like in your home. Once the pressure gets too low inside the accumulator tank, the pump will jump back on and build up the pressure again.
From the sink, the water runs down through the bilge into the wastewater tank. Once this one has reached a certain level, the Gulper 320 will be triggered and pump out the grey water up to the through hull and out to the side of the boat. The through hull is shared by the wastewater pump and the bilge pump. I'm using non-return valves to avoid the water from either pump from mixing, but to be honest I'm not quite sure if this system is gonna work in the long term, so I'm gonna make some more tests in the future to find this out. In some areas I'm using a spiral hose to bind the cables together. In other places I'm using simple cable ties. The ones I'm using here are reopenable so that I can add more cables in the future. The semi-rigid tubes are mostly just lying loosely, held in place by their semi-rigid nature. I did of course add some tube clamps and cable ties wherever possible, but I think in the future I'm gonna add some more attachments to make sure everything is safe and secure in the long run. And so, that's our water system as of today. At this point, I would like to thank once more our sponsor Whale for providing most of the devices used in this system. And with that, my friends, I'm signing out. Thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.